I'm Alex, and today we're going to talk about testing for all screen sizes. We'll soon get to the tools and resources available, but first, let's go over some theory for what you should be testing across different screen sizes and why. Android apps don't just run on phones. Those same apps will also run on tablets, foldables, and desktop devices. These varied types of devices have different screen shapes and sizes, and the extra space on larger devices makes multitasking easier. Many of these differences can be summarized by the configuration. Different devices will have different ranges of possible configurations, and the current configuration will change as the device rotates, resizes, folds, or enters and leaves multi-window mode. The configuration is available through an activities resources and contains information about the screen shape, orientation, locale, density, font scale and weight, and a lot more. In Jetpack Compose, the current configuration is available to composable functions via a composition local, local configuration. Retrieving the value with local configuration.current will recompose with the new configuration whenever it changes. Running your app on a single device will only cover a portion of the scenarios that your app will handle, so it's important to test it on a variety of devices. This will cover multiple different initial configurations and changes while your app is open. And the configuration will change while your app is open. While there are ways to restrict which configurations your app supports, please avoid using them. These restrictions can reduce the number of configuration changes you'll receive, but your app will be placed into a compatibility mode on some devices, and you will have to adapt to changing configurations regardless of the options you set. We'll talk a bit more about that later. When the configuration changes, by default, each activity will be recreated and initialized with the new configuration. Be sure to check out the updated docs for details about how configuration changes occur and how they relate to the activity lifecycle. This lifecycle is especially important for devices with larger screens because resizing and rotating is much more common. Let's take a look at the three main behaviors to test for across different and changing configurations. Crashes, saving UI state, and compatibility mode. We'll start with the most essential. Make sure your app doesn't crash when changing configurations and when the activity recreates. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but make sure you're testing combinations of rotating, folding, and resizing freeform windows and split-screen mode to check that your app can handle all of them. In particular, you might crash if you assume that state is still set in an activity, which was cleared when the activity was recreated. For example, a latent var in an activity will be cleared when the activity is recreated due to configuration change. You may also crash if you keep references to obsolete activity instances that were destroyed. Second, make sure you aren't losing the user state while these configurations are changing. It's an incredibly frustrating user experience if rotating the device or folding wipes out everything in a partially filled out form. Make sure text fields, scroll positions and lists, media playback, and the navigation state for where the user is in your app doesn't get reset when the configuration changes. As a general rule, if the device starts at some initial configuration A, and then it changes to configuration B, and then switches back to configuration A, your app state and UI state should be the same as when you started. For instance, if you rotate a device 90 degrees and then rotate it 90 degrees back, you should be on the same screen as you were previously, with the same scroll position and the same overall view of your app. Be sure to check out the Saving UI State on Android talk, which goes even more in depth for the APIs available to save UI state. And finally, check if your app will be placed into a compatibility mode. As I mentioned earlier, you can declare some restrictions on the configurations your app supports, but these can place your app into compatibility mode on large screen devices running Android 12L and above. There are two ways that each activity can be placed into compatibility mode. The first is if you declare your activity as not resizable by setting the resizable activity attribute to false in your manifest. If you restrict resizability of the activity, you might also be restricting the aspect ratio as well with the min aspect ratio and max aspect ratio attributes. The second way is if you declare a restriction on orientation, either with the orientation attribute in the manifest or at runtime with activity.setRequestedOrientation. If either of these restrictions are in place, the system can place your app into a compatibility mode if the current device configuration is incompatible with the restrictions you've applied to your activity. This allows all apps to run in both portrait and landscape orientations and in multi-window mode. For example, if your app is locked to portrait using the orientation attribute, then when a tablet is rotated to landscape, 
your app will be letterboxed to show a portrait view of your app inside the landscape-oriented screen. If you are declaring restricted support, be aware that you will still get configuration changes as the user rotates the device and enters multi-window mode. Restricting resizability or locking to an orientation is not a way to avoid the activity lifecycle. We recommend removing the resizability and orientation restrictions as you verify that your app can handle them so you can use the entire space available to your app instead of being letterboxed by the system. If your app behaves well in all these areas, you've got the foundations for an app that can adapt to all screen sizes. Now that we've established a theory, Josh will take a look at the tools that Compose, Jetpack, and Android Studio provide to verify these behaviors for your app. Thanks, Alex. There are many tools in the toolkit when you need to test your apps. Whether it is during the development cycle or you are incorporating these tests into your continuous integration environments, these tools can be critical for catching issues early. First, let's talk about emulator updates for all types of screen sizes. All these emulators allow you to test your app in different ways. Let's go through each one in a bit more detail to showcase how using any one of these emulators will improve your app quality when testing. The various foldable emulators showcase how your application will perform when the device is opened and how the app state transfers to the outside screen when closed. Here are some emulators to help you get started. There are a few foldable emulators for different fold mechanisms and device sizes. The goal of these emulators is to showcase how your app preserves state across the folding and unfolding of the device, including saving instant state, such as partially complete form data. The desktop emulator allows you to run your application in a freeform windowing mode, similar to a Chromebook. Freeform window management gives users more freedom using apps on large screens. Some desktop features include minimize, maximize, window restoration, and placement of the app within the window space. Apps launched in the desktop emulator can also be resized to fit whatever needs the user may have. The resizable emulator is an experimental emulator with three preset sizes. These preset sizes are phone, tablet, and unfolded foldable. These preset sizes allow you to change the size to ensure it is handling activity recreation effectively in different screen sizes. To use the resizable emulator, you must have Android 13 as a minimum SDK level. If you prefer physical devices, Android Studio can accommodate that too. The electric eel release of Android Studio allows you to take advantage of device mirroring. This feature allows you to interact with a physical device inside the running devices window of Android Studio. To turn this feature on, go to Settings, Tools, and select Device Mirroring. You may also find this is under the Experimental section in Settings. Once the feature is turned on, connect your device via USB, and the IDE will show the mirror of your physical device. Device mirroring allows you to perform common actions, such as rotating the screen, changing the volume, or locking and unlocking the device directly from the IDE. These features allow you to test how your app behaves with things like changing orientations while using a test device you may already own. Finally, for those developers who are writing in Compose, there are some new updates for you as well. One of the major additions for testing is multi-preview support for Jetpack Compose. The multi-preview feature allows you to see how your UI built in Jetpack Compose will look across multiple different device sizes simultaneously. First, let's take a look at the preview annotation class. Inside of the preview annotation, you can add parameters such as width DP, height DP, font size, device types, and other parameters. Let's now create a basic button. We can put this button inside of a column and align it to the center of our screen horizontally. We can then assign it a padding and let it take the default primary and secondary colors. This button also has a text field inside where we can add text dynamically. When we create a new function called preview button and add the preview annotation, 
we can see our button show up in the preview window. Next, let's create an annotation class called Device Size Previews. This class contains various preview annotations that highlight different device sizes. In this example, we have one device that has custom width, height, and density. Also included are predefined device sizes for the Pixel 6 Pro, a large desktop, an 8-inch foldable, and a 10.1-inch tablet. By adding the device size previews annotation to our previous preview button function, we can now see how that button would look across our different devices simultaneously. This is just one way that the new Jetpack Compose multi-preview tool can be leveraged to test your apps on multiple screen sizes. Now let's throw it over to Rob to talk about automated testing. Thanks, Josh. It's nice to have a lot of choices when it comes to manual testing, but there are some tasks that can and should be automated. Testing is always important, but when it comes to large screens, it's a good practice to be running your test suite on a different variety of devices that can go from phones to foldables to desktops and tablets. To do so, you can leverage Gradle managed devices to spin up several emulators with different features and run your test suite on all of them. Additionally, there is a new Espresso device API that will let you control your device synchronously to test even more features. To learn more about this tool, check out the Scalable UI Testing Solutions talk. Different screen sizes, though, require different UI tests, and there is a way to run different UI tests based on the screen size of the device. Let's show a quick example of why this is useful. If you have, for instance, a list detail flow, a UI test for a compact screen will check that the list only is shown and the navigation is at the bottom of the screen. While on expanded screens, you need to make sure that both the list and the detail are shown, and the navigation moves to the side of the screen. One way you can achieve this is writing different tests and only run them on the devices that match the chosen configuration. Let's see how. First, you need to declare some annotations that will help you divide your tests based on the screen size. Then you mark the test with the annotations you just created so that they can be divided for each size. At this point, you can pass the specific annotation as a parameter to a Gradle managed device so that only the tests marked with the specific annotation will be run on the device. When it comes to foldables in particular, Testing what happens in case of your activity being destroyed and recreated is very important, as it is something that happens quite frequently if you don't deal with configuration changes manually. To test what happens, you can leverage the activity scenario.recreate API. This function will destroy the current activity, saving its state in a bundle, and it creates the same activity again, passing this bundle, thus ensuring that the state is retained. To help even more with testing on foldable devices, you can use the window testing artifact that will allow your tests to simulate a folding feature. Let's see how. First, you need to declare two test rules, the activity scenario rule we are already familiar with and the window layout info publisher rule. And you can set their order so that the activity scenario rule is the second to run. Then, you simulate a folding feature, defining its state and orientation, and set these to be your expectations. Next, you ask the system to respect these expectations via the test tool, and you leverage Espresso matches to verify the correct behavior of your app. Let's switch gears to Jetpack Compose. We already covered how to test the behavior of an app in presence of a folding feature. But what about other configuration changes, like size? First, to test how your composable retain the state upon recreation, you can leverage the state restoration tester API from the Compose Testing Collection. To use it, you need to create a Compose Test Rule 
and pass it as a constructor argument to the state restoration tester. You need to use the tester to set the content of the composable under test. Now, you can test as usual with the methods from the compose test tool. And whenever you are ready to trigger a recreation, you can do it by invoking the emulate save it instant state restore method from the state restoration tester. Now, as we mentioned before, your composables can encounter size configuration changes alongside their path. And there is a tool that will come in quite handy in this situation. Test harness. This API will let you define different scenarios related to your composables, like display size, font scale, locale and layout direction, and even system themes. Now, let's see again the example from earlier and check how we can leverage test harness to check different features for different composable sizes. You don't need to keep the text expanded with annotation, as you can leverage the test harness function to define the size of the composable, so that your test can run anywhere. Be mindful that the annotation and the test harness function play two different roles. While the annotation defines in what environment the test will run, the test harness function will effectively change the size of the composable. Now, let's explore another useful example with test harness, related to another large screen example. You want to test that the UI for the navigation is at the bottom of the compass screen, and on the side, otherwise. First, let's create a new test. Then, we add the compose test tool that defines the composable. At this point, we can define the dimensions of the composable. We use test harness to constrain the size that the composable will be displaying into. And we can check that the bottom bar is displaying correctly with the compose test rule. Now you're ready to test your app all around. But to learn more about everything we talked about in this video, check out the links in the description and happy testing! Have a great IO!